Wait, we must have swapped wallets at some point, because this is your city sport card. Oh. Yeah. That's why the lady looked at me really funny today. Oh. Yes. So I went in and she obviously looked at me and went, you don't look like an Ali Abdul. Yes, quite. Um, did you do a sesh this morning? Yeah. And did you pay? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because I tried going in with this yesterday and she was like, you're a pay as you go, Gordon. I was like, I'm not Gordon. <laughs> so yeah, that's your card. You should take your card. I'll, hold on, I'll give you yours back. So oh, okay, so we need to swap But maybe you've got my Quora card then. Maybe. Maybe I'm prancing around as some... Yeah. Uh, Exec CEO of a large maybe, but I do have I, I do have the business card in here, and I, I think we, we must have just accidentally swapped wallets at some point. Time to say hello to T. Hello, it's a party. Tiago, good to see you in the flesh. How are you doing? Flesh, Mark. Good to see you in the flesh. Good to see you. Francesca, good to see you again. Good to see you again. Yeah, what are we doing? How are you? It's very well, thank you. This is Gordon, a videographer. Would you like a tea or coffee before we go up? Uh, I'll have a coffee. Okay. Yeah, do you want to come on into the cafe? Basically, doing the book stuff well and doing the YouTube stuff well and doing everything else good enough yeah. to maintain yeah. until we can like really rocket yeah. it. Yeah. But yeah, I think Sweet. hopefully the book goes really well and we get a ton of new inbound interest. Yeah. YouTube will be more of our like catcher's mitt of like mainstream people coming in yes. who aren't necessarily like Tiago comes from a very like hardcore Evernote note taking yeah. background relative to like a mainstream, yes. mainstream audience. audience. So a lot of what we're focusing on is like making that a very easy transition as more people get aware of the concept of second brains. So huh. she's the one who kept you on it for so long. <laughs> she kinda, she kept me on it for a while. Yeah. Constant campaigning. Yeah. Well like in the sense of like not like kind of pushy parent like campaigning, but more like a layer underneath that of like, yeah. you know, I've got a friend who tried to start a business and then in business failed yeah. and now he regrets not doing medicine. Uh, like, so she's you don't want to be like that. She's a <laughs> exactly, oh, yeah, great. it's good propaganda. Let's meet Angus. Oh, cool. Oh, brilliant, yeah. Did you see too much? Yeah, likewise. And then Francesco, you know, Angus, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know you before. Through emails. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, welcome to the party. This is our little, uh, little box where we do stuff. This is the whole place? You fit everybody in here? Uh, it's, it's a bit tricky. We'll show you the gallery as well. That's yeah. like the, the co working -y kind of area. Gollum, Tiago. Gollum is a bit on the second brain hype. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Uh, nice to meet you. And Gollum, I'm Francesco. Along. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice to meet you. This is just where we hang out some of the time. Yeah, very lovely little way out. So far, can you use this like, as much as you want? Pretty much. Occasionally they book it out uh, like once or twice a week for events. We spent a year remodeling our garage. Yeah. So much time and money into it, yeah. and now it's so built up as a studio. I can't work there. Oh, yeah. The energy is so heavy. Yeah. So many like, stuff. Yeah. Mechanical things hanging over you. I have to go to the local coffee shop just as I always did. Yeah, I kind of found the same thing with my place in Cambridge when I when I had like the light and the cameras and the C stands, and it's just like something about ugh, it's just not very creative energy. Yeah. Everything's black. Everything's yeah. heavy. Everything's very fixed. Yeah. <laughs> I would just hop over here if I were you. And yeah. Work from one of these places. Yeah, that's what I tend to do. I tend to just cover here on my laptop, and then when we're filming, we go back, back over there. All right. Should we get the show on the road? Yeah. And then, in terms of like chap chapter by chapter, how how were you thinking about it when you were writing it? It was like I knew that there was the central part, which was code. Yeah. So these are four chapters, yeah. and then with books these days, they kind of want you to summarize the entire book, yeah. like. It's, it's kind of fractal, actually. This is like, um, this whole thing is an intro. Yeah. As a whole, right? Mm. But then this chapter by itself is like a mini intro. Yep. So whether you read just the first chapter, just part one, yep. or the whole book, yeah, so you, you get, get the, the whole, thing, you get the whole system. Solid. Okay. And so then there were three chapters. So there was one, two, three introductory chapters, and then one, two, three concluding chapters. That's it. Four seven, ten chapters. Okay. Yeah, this is sort of what we're doing for ours. There's like, but it's more like the central thing is kind of chapters two, two and three, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, and then there's another bit, and then there's another bit. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like, I know most people are not going to read beyond chapter three, so let's give them the good stuff or like the novel stuff first. And then the rest of it is a bit more fleshing, fleshing out. That's smart. Yeah, yeah, you want to front, this was a big shift for me because I tend to, like many writers, ramp up to things yeah. and give you the payoff at the end. Yeah. And my editor was like, if you have the payoff here, yeah. it's not going to work. They're not going to get past here. Yeah. So like two is is like a mini code. Yeah. So you get the whole code method yeah. in this chapter. Yeah. 
And then three is kind of like a transition yep. from that to mm -hmm. the main chapters. Oh, that's nice. Okay, that's a good shout. Hey friends, welcome back to the vlog. This is gonna be a fun day. We are here filming with Tiago Forte. We've known each other on the internet, I think for like three years now. I feel like it was 2019. It's been a long time. When I discovered your stuff. My brother actually recommended me to you. He was like, so Ali, you know how you're a productivity guru to all these people? Tiago should be your productivity guru. I was like, I'm sold. Amazing. And then discovered Amazing. building a second brain, took the course, became a mentor on the course. And here we are. We've got Mark, we've got Francesco over here as well. We'll link their res respective YouTube channels down below. Mark and I have also been friends on the internet since like 2019. And then Francesco and I met in Cambridge like four years ago. And yeah, where you told me to get on Skillshare. And yeah. so thank you very much for that. Right. We owe you a lifetime worth of dinners <laughs> whenever you're in London <laughs> for that particular recommendation. Um, but yeah, this is, gonna, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna be filming a bunch of videos, talking about Tiago's new book, Building a Second Brain. We're gonna go through my note-taking system, my second brain, and you can kind of give me some tips. Discuss book writing, we're gonna do a podcast interview. This is, this is the stuff of dreams. This is like meeting friends from across the world and chatting about note-taking. I also think like, I know you're supposed to separate the capture from the organizing. And I know David Allen talks about capture being a specific thing and then organizing being a well, CC, whatever the second C is. Uh, clarify. Cl clarify, that's yeah. the one. But in my mind, when I capture something, I have an idea of what I'm capturing it for. Mm -hmm. So for example, I tend to use Apple Notes and Roam and a combination of the two for mm -hmm. personal note taking mm -hmm. and also for my book project. Mm -hmm but we exclusively use Notion for anything related to the team, i.e. anything related to YouTube videos totally. or like newsletters or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so if, for example, I have a thought that, oh, random thought in the shower of the daily highlight method for productivity or whatever, mm -hmm. then I'm thinking, okay, is this relevant for a book thing or is it relevant for a YouTube video thing? Mm -hmm. If it is relevant for a book thing, I'll chuck it into Apple Notes or yeah. into Rome. Uh -huh. And if it's relevant for a YouTube thing, I'll just chuck it straight into Notion. Yeah. Sometimes it's both and then it gets a bit messy, but like, I don't think about it too hard. You know, that's perfect. You know, the different steps of what, what is essentially the creative process, you can do them sort of one at a time, dedicated, like single tasking. But sometimes with the way technology is going, you can just like do them all at once or yeah. skip around or go backwards. Like I almost think about Twitter. You know, you might have an idea, you write it directly into a tweet, that's capture. Maybe you add a hashtag, that's kind of like organize, and distill, and then you hit tweet. You've just gone through the four steps of code in about 30 seconds. Mm. So there's no, there's no speed limit. You can go as fast as you want. Um, and if you know where to put something, absolutely. Like, why waste the effort that you just put in to decide where that goes? Just put it straight there. You can get so fixated on productivity, your work starts to become formulaic, it starts to become very boring, and it's time to, to kind of go to the other end of the spectrum, creativity. But then you can go too far in creativity. That's when you get too precious. You get too, oh no, that's my art, it has to be this certain way. And you know, you talk to someone six months later, what are you doing? Oh, I'm working on my, my one painting for the last six months. That also doesn't work. You're getting stuck, you're getting, you're getting sort of locked up in your own preciousness. And so I, I really see them as this kind of alternating back and forth pendulum. Nice. Yeah, I had, I had a bit of thought as, as you were saying that, and I've never really thought of the two as being being separate. I, get, I, I guess given that a bunch of videos I make happen to be vaguely themed around productivity, when people ask me, oh, what is productivity to you? I kind of take a step back, I broaden it out, and I say, oh, productivity is just using your time intentionally, yeah. which then makes it a more like gentle definition that you can apply to your personal life, to your work life, and who doesn't want to use the time more intentionally? Yeah. But there's something about the word productivity that feels a bit more like, ugh. It, it, it feels very worky yeah. and very much like I'm generating economic output for my employer and this is a bad thing. Yeah. Um, any, any thoughts on that? Productivity is like efficiency. Efficiency is sort of a synonym, right? Mm -hmm. What is efficiency? If you Again, if you go back to manufacturing, it's simply minimizing waste. That's how I think of it. Mm. Which is one of the most important things in life. Like when people say productivity doesn't matter, I go, does it not matter that you not waste your time? You know, does it not matter that you waste your attention? Does it not matter that you waste your ideas? Does it not matter that you waste your potential? Like, isn't that like almost what life is about? Mm. And it's easy to lose sight of that if you think of efficiency, but I, I really just think about it as minimizing waste. Alrighty, so we've just filmed the first half of our conversation where we talked about like why productivity is not a dirty word, why money and making money is in fact not a bad thing and Kind of, you know, this idea that that, that that Tiago had that, like, 
Often increasing someone's income is the way to make all of the other things in their life potentially get better because without like this baseline level of income, baseline level of money, it's very hard to take care of your health, to take care of your family, to do all those important things. And I think that's like a perspective that I actually haven't heard before because in my mind, it was, it's, there's all, all these like limiting beliefs around money being like, oh, money, money is evil, money is bad, selling is bad, all of these things, which even though I try and kind of combat those, it's still like bubbling under the surface. So interesting first half of the conversation talking about Tiago's journey to get to the point of becoming one of the world's most foremost experts on productivity. <laughs> um, and now in the second half, we're gonna grab some sushi and then in the second half of the conversation, we're gonna dive into the principles of productivity and creativity that we can apply to our business lives and also to our personal lives. Alrighty friends, it is now 11.40 at night time. Uh, left Tiago and the gang at around 2.30, and I spent the last several hours hanging out with a special someone. But in this little uh, final bit, I wanted to talk about the best part about being a YouTuber. And genuinely, it's not the fame or the prestige, prestige, or the status or the money or any of that kind of stuff or the accolades. It genuinely is actually the friends that you make along the way. And it sounds cliche, but it's like that thing about like being a pirate. Being a pirate is not about the treasure at the end of the trip, it's about the friends you make on the journey. And by far the best thing about being a YouTuber, second best thing, has been this kind of making of friends across the internet. And honestly, it's one of the biggest perks about it because like it's only really through sharing your work, showing your work online, that you can unlock such an extensive network of like really cool people who are also interested in exactly the same stuff. I guess another way of doing it would be to go to business conferences where people at those conferences are the sorts of people that you would wanna hang out with. But then even at the conferences, really, the conferences are a good place to network for the people speaking at the conference, not really so much as the people attending the conference because anyone can attend a conference but really, generally, the people that you really want to be friends with, this sounds a bit mercenary, but the people you want to be friends with are the people who are also putting in the work. And if you are the one putting in the work, you want to be friends with other people putting in the work because there's just a, a different level of connection that you get with people who are also doing the work rather than the people who are watching the people who are doing the work. So long story short, it's a fantastic part of, of hanging out with the gang. And it's just so cool how you can kind of know someone through Twitter and a couple of Zoom calls for three, four years and then hang out with them in real life and you just immediately hit it off. And like through this YouTube thing, I now, you know, I'm very privileged to say that I have friends in basically almost every country in the world. That's probably a bit of an exaggeration, but like most countries in the world that I'd want to visit, all I have to do is reach out to people in the network and there would be a pre-existing group of friends uh, or even in the audience, you know, just post on my Instagram story and be like, hey, anyone want to hang out? And it's just a really cool way of meeting people. We were in Monaco a few months ago, I hung out with one of our subscribers who kind of showed us around. That was amazing. And so really, I think this is an underrated thing that a lot of people don't talk about when it comes to being a YouTuber, the friends that you make along the way. And so, as I often find myself doing in these little vlogs, that if you are thinking of starting your own creatorpreneur journey or anything like that, then go for it. Like honestly, go for it. You will be very, very unlikely to regret it and there's not a single person I know who has done some kind of content creation on the internet consistently for two years who has regretted doing that. They've all said, wow, this thing has changed my life and I can't guarantee any numbers, can't tell you how much money you're gonna make, but I can tell you it's gonna change your life and that'll probably be because A, of the skills you learn along the way and B, the friends you make along the way as well. So that brings us to the end of this little vlog. Thank you very much for watching. Please click here for yesterday's vlog and click here for the little playlist of daily vlogs that we've got on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Do hit the subscribe button if you aren't already and I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Bye-bye.